Well, hello there. So, just very quick thing. This right here, which is my Power Macintosh G4 mirror drive doors, uh, has died. Uh, it died yesterday. It uh, started kernel panicking and then the thing just stopped working. I replaced the motherboard with a spare I had from that other G4 MDD I dismantled which is waiting for water cooling uh, components and uh, yeah the board on that one was dead I did, I did not know the board on that one was dead so yeah board was dead and yeah I've been you know I kind of went uh, through all the all the stages of coping and when I got to bargaining I remembered my friend who works at a computer repair store had in the back of the store a Firewire 800 uh, G4 and so this guy is my new daily computer <laughs> It's, it looks exactly the same, uh, front back it's almost the same computer and if, I mean, if it wasn't a, a Farwide 800 model I would have just swapped the boards and gotten my good old G4 running because this thing has been the single most reliable computer I have used. Uh, I've been using it as my main desktop for, gee I don't know almost five years. I swapped it with the Hackintosh I made. I swapped it with that for around like two months, maybe one and a half, until the Intel vulnerabilities, all of those came out. Then my paranoia just kicked in and I just put the, the Hackintosh in storage, where it is right now, and switched back to the MDD. And this thing, it's had so many upgrades uh, over the years. Uh, it had obviously a USB 2.0 card. It had finally its GeForce FX 5200 uh, replaced finally with a Radeon 9600, then a 9800 XT, which sadly died yesterday. It seems like the board somehow took the 9800 with it. I don't know why. Uh, it's had what else? Oh, an M old M Audio uh, Delta twenty four ninety five audio file, something or other audio card in it. I just needed something with RCA uh, outputs, so I swapped that in there. It originally was a Dual one point twenty five. I overclocked uh, the CPUs to Dual one point thirty three. The PSU on it about two months ago uh, finally gave up the ghost and I swapped the internals of the PSU with a modern PSU, a Seasonic uh, M12 II power supply, I think the 520 watt version and it's been working great since until, well, this happened so what I did is I simply just gutted it uh, I took everything out except for the board which is what's bad I'm gonna keep the casing or well you could say it's kind of the carcass of the computer um, these panels I'm gonna clean them up a bit because they've gotten dirty over the years I've had them completely clean they're, they're not uh, scratched or anything there are the optical drives of the that guy uh, but yeah I took everything out of there and I shoved it into there now this is uh, a year newer, so this is 2002, this is 2003, this is exactly the same, it's a Power Mac G4 uh, Firewire 800, which is the last Power Mac G4 ever made. Now, I got this again from a friend, which had it in the back of his shop. Uh, it was as bare bones as you can think, the power supply had been taken out, uh, the graphics card, the... Heatsink, actually I did take the heatsink myself, uh, I, I took it 
a while ago. Um, what else? Hard drives, hard drive cages, just about everything. Luckily the fan was in it with the air guide that was put in later MTDs and Fireware 800s. Now the only difference between this guy and that guy is that port right there. I mean on the surface that is. Uh, that port right there. This is a Firewire 800 port which I'm not gonna use. I, I have never in my life used Firewire apart from once when I used it to upgrade the hard drive in my laptop. My laptop has uh, well, it, it's an iBook G4, so it has um, Firewire target disk mode, so what I did is I uh, just imaged it from another computer uh, because I didn't want to reinstall, uh, want to redo the Debian install that I have in there. And I just imaged the drive to another computer via Firewire, and then I swapped the SSD that I have in there, and I just re-imaged the thing. Now, something that this uh, had to, which I've replaced, is a 1 gigahertz CPU, single, single CPU. Now, it has the dual uh, 1.33 gigahertz CPUs that I had in there, but right now they're running at 1 gigahertz. And that is because the bus speed of this was 167 megahertz, bus speed of this one is 133, because Apple is all about crippling slow machines and when this guy was out uh, together with the Parma uh, G5 it kind of it kind of was just a cheaper machine and it was crippled artificially crippled uh, via well slowing the bus speed which really really affects memory performance not so much the but the CPUs I mean in dual in dual socket sorry dual CPU configurations it does hurt them even 167 megahertz bus is already um, bottlenecking dual CPUs on this. So, for example, when you do a Cinebench test, the multicore scaling is like 1.5 something. Uh, I'm not sure it is if it is all because of the bus or the awful uh, cache coherency that my early G4s have, but I think it's mostly because of the boss. But yeah, the original CPU is in there in a nice anti-static bag. That's my dead 9800. Rip in peace. You, this thing was an absolute beast of a card. But yeah, this is my computer now. So I'll have now uh, things I have to do to it. I have to configure the bus on the motherboard. To run at 167 megahertz, just like this one. That's no big deal. It's just soldering two resistors in it, two jumper links, and I also have to swap the panels because how do you even manage to do this to a computer? I don't know. Like I, I understand these are workstations because Apple. Can you imagine Apple actually used to make workstations back in the day? Uh, competitive ones too. Uh, you can see it's probably been dropped at some point because it even has cracks. But yeah, can you imagine Apple actually making upgradable computers and workstations and computers with you know ports, actually tons of ports. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's that's this guy. Let's open it up. Uh, I'll show you what I have inside it. So I have the optical bay, the top bay has been removed. I made this little cage. Now I have an original cage to show you how it looked originally. That, now that guy is just one bay because nobody uses a single optical drive anymore. Let's be honest, I'm not gonna use dual optical, optical drives. Um, I have, what else, let's see, that's the audio card, the sound card, the M audio, Delta, whatever, audio full, whatever you want to call it, USB 2.0, that's a SATA card, that is SATA 1, but it provides enough bandwidth for me, it has, talking about SATA, 500 gig gigabyte uh, Toshiba hard drive, now SSDs on this controller card 
are an issue mainly because uh, I think the first uh, revision of SATA had some weird things done to it because some early SATA optical drives used the ATAPI protocol and they were just bridged to SATA and they had to make some compromises and SATA 3 drives mess uh, around with the things that made SATA 1 compatible with that and since this is a SATA 1 controller when you use a SATA 3 SSD in it which does not take in mind SATA 1 controllers it kinda messes up with it I already tried putting an SSD in this and it kind of didn't work at all it could read from it it could not write to it it, it was an absolute mess so yeah that's that moving on this is a Radeon 9600 XT that's from a whoop someone's calling me and I'm back so as I was saying this is a Radeon 9600 XT that's from a Parmac G5 um, it's been modified so it works in a G4 you just have to desolder two resistors to make it work and the good thing about this card is it has two DVI two full fat DVI connectors so you can hook up up to dual 1920 by 1200 displays to it which is pretty nice I think it also does like those 2560 by 1080 uh, ultra wide panels but don't quote me on it uh, we have the fan right there that's not the original fan I replaced that the original fan was a Delta this is a servo uh, why because the Delta uh, is one ticky motherfucker it really ticks quite a lot it, it I cannot stand the ticking of that thing and that servo came out of a Sun um, Enterprise 280R yeah, Sun Enterprise 280R. It has the air guide, which really helps with temperatures, actually. You would think it doesn't, it's such a small thing, but it does. Then it has the big hunk of metal version of the heatsink, which is was uh, shipped with up to dual 1.25 gigahertz. The dual 1.42 was shipped with a copper heatsink with heat pipes, which I cannot for the life of me find. But, well, I removed that hard drive cage. Well, it was not there in the first place. In my MDD, I removed it, have it safe somewhere. And I put this fan on top. It really doesn't make any noise, and it helps a lot with temperatures, like 10 degrees. It shaves 20 deg 10 degrees off of that. And it makes the computer a lot quieter, like a lot quieter. There's the power supply. Originally, as you can see, it was an Akbell something or other. I don't care, that's a uh, Seasonic M12 II. In fact, you can see the mounting screws for the new circuit board right there. And there's also, well, I don't know where it might be. Oh, here it is. That cable right there, which is actually, oh, there we go. This cable, which is just flapping around in the breeze, uh, is the... Um, ADC Apple Display Connector uh, power cable and my camera can focus for crap but yeah that's the power cable that used to provide 24 volts not using it my card doesn't have ADC don't care so yeah that's that now I have to uh, yeah change the resistors I think it's those right there I think it's these resistors right here that I have to change those I think I'm not sure uh, but yeah and to change the the bus back to the thing oh also it has uh, two modules of uh, DDR400 memory uh, two gigabytes and also the 9600 has an aftermarket cooler quite a flashy thing just connected to this lead I took off the PSU uh, which originally was powering my 9800 but now it's just powering that fan I had to remove one of the retaining clips for the RAM there I don't care 
na one gigabyte DDR sticks exist now, so I can max out this machine without using the four slots. Look, it also has a modem there. And an airport extreme, extreme, that that is uh, 802.11g for any use of, that's 54 megabits per second, it's not extreme anymore. Uh, but that's for, yeah, Wi-Fi. And then there's this, which this I really like, this my, um, my other MDD didn't have. Uh, this is actually a slot for a Bluetooth card, which I do have. I do have a more modern one, which uses the same connector, which came out of, um, of an iMac, of a broken Intel iMac, and I know it does work on PowerPC machines, mainly because I've used those modules. I have tons of those modules, mainly because I have tons of trash iMacs, because the failure rates on those are absolutely incredible like you wouldn't think such an, an expensive computer would fail so much but they do uh, soldered GPUs do that to you so yeah it has a, a modem I don't know if I mentioned that 56k modem <laughs> okay uh, I guess oh it also came without a PRAM battery I replaced that uh, and I will have to replace it probably soon because that battery is close to 20 years old so yeah yeah, that's about it. Uh, it. It works. I may do some benchmarks, maybe, uh, about the dual 130, 1.33 gig CPUs. It, there's really... it Like, if I had a dual 1.42, which was, like, overclocked to dual 1.67, which is doable, if you have 7455Bs, this thing has 7455As. Uh, that's the chips. Uh, I would actually po post like uh, benchmarks because a dual 1.67 G4 would be absolutely awesome. But yeah, this is just a run of the mill <laughs> G4. Like yeah, it it is a FireWire 800 model. It is the last model. It is supposedly the, the fastest G4. Not quite because it isn't a dual 1.42. But yeah, if I had that, I would post benchmarks. Maybe if I replace the card with maybe someday for. I don't know some sort of alignment of planet of planets. Uh, the I managed to get like a 7800GS or something for it. I will post ben benchmarks, but yeah, for now I think that's that's it for this computer. Also, his name is Hector. It seems. Yeah, but that's that.